Hey everyone, and welcome to the next tutorial. Uh, so in this one, we are going to uh, get our planets to be random sizes, and we're also going to get it to where they can use floating point values for their movement. Because as of right now, if you look at our planet class, um, it's going to pick a random velocity between 1 and 3, So and it's always an integer, so it's going to be 1, 2, or 3 pixels. It can't be anything in between. And the reason why is because the rect uh, attribute for the object only accepts integers. So we need some type of like proxy variable in between that can uh, use floating points. And then uh, we'll actually add our velocity to those variables. And then we'll assign those, or we'll add those variables to the rec.x, but when when we add it, we convert it back to an integer to drop the, uh, the uh, decimal off. It'll make sense once we do it. Um, so let's get started. I also, uh, before recording this video, cut the transparency out of the images. So if we play our game now. Uh, should see a planet come down and it actually looks, there we go. So now it's transparent. Um, so let's go ahead and get the random size portion working. Uh, so we're in our planet object and the first thing I wanna do after we create our image, I want to get something called like a scale value because pretty much the way I'm thinking of doing this is we're going to use the transform function or the scale function inside the transform module. Uh, and I want to multiply its width and height by a floating point uh, somewhere between like 20, 0.25 and 1. So it'll either be 25% of its size or it'll be 100% of its size. So let's do this. Let's uh, scale. We'll make a variable called scale value. And I've already got random imported. Now, in order to generate a floating point, a random floating point number, uh, it's you can't use rand range. Rand range is only uh, integers. But there's one called uniform. Uniform does the same thing, but it, it uh, generates a random floating point number. So I'm going to do point two. Uh, we'll just type 0 0.25 to 1.0. So that generates a random uh, percentage uh, for this particular planet it's going to generate. Then we're going to grab the image and transform it with pygame.transform.scale. And we're transforming the image. And this is uh, where we're going to put, well, we're going to transform it by. So the width is going to be self.image.getWidth. Uh, and we're going to multiply that by the scale value, self.scale value. Now, the issue with this is this whole statement right here is going to return a floating point and it can't be that when we scale it it has to be an integer so we're going to wrap the whole thing inside of an integer uh, function there we go and we need to do the same thing for the uh, width or for the height so self dot image dot get height multiply that by the scale value and we need to wrap that whole thing inside of an integer as well and that should work. So let's see if it actually generates um, a random size planet. I'm also going to go to our background class and I'm going to change just so we can do some testing. I'm going to put it between like 60 frames and 120 frames for how often it spawns a planet. So we can see them a bit quicker. We don't have to wait as long. So let's hit play. And we got an error. So. Uh, it's on line 23 on the planet. So it's taking the image. Uh, we're converting. Oh, I put the parentheses in the wrong spot. Uh, so we're, we've got the tuple here of the width and height. So we're convert, converting self.image.getWidth multiplied by the scale value, converting that into an integer. And just double checking my parentheses, making sure they're correct. I think they're correct. We'll get another error if they're not. And we got another error. Uh, integer, with the height. Yeah, I think that's that one right there. I think this should work. Watch me get another one. There we go. Yeah, so those are two small ones. That one's a little bit bigger, so it looks like it's working. Yeah, so you can see those are the two exact same image, but one's smaller than the other, so that works. Uh, 
so the next thing we need to do is get the floating point um, movement working. Uh, and right now they're only they're either moving one, two, or three pixels per frame. But I don't want them to move that fast. I kind of want it to be like between like a, like a decimal, like 0.5 pixels per frame. Uh, the way I'm going to do that, we're going to make kind of like I call it a proxy variable. Um, so I'm going to make one called position x, and this equals like its true position, and it's going to be uh, 0.0. .0. It'll be a floating point. All right. Um, and now what we need to do is actually add the velocity. Uh, it's it's going to be identical to this adding it to the rect right here but instead of doing that we're going to add our made up variable the position x we're going to add velocity to it and velocity is uh, going to be a floating point so position x plus equals self dot velocity x and position y plus equals self dot velocity y and for velocity y we're going to use that uniform method so uniform and we'll make it between like point 0 0.1 and 1.0. And we'll do like, I don't know, 1.5. So this is how fast it'll move. So obviously this position X, uh, this this whole statement right here will not move the actual image because I have to, the rect object is what we have to adjust to get it to actually move. So this is just adding uh, velocity y which is a floating point to position y which is a floating point so now we need to add position y to the rect attributes but when we add it we need to convert it back to an integer so we'll do do it with x and y so position x um, we're not we're not adding it uh, or sorry it'll be rect.x we're not adding it we're just saying it's assigned whatever position x is so self dot uh, rect.x plus or equals self dot position x but we need to, because rec.x cannot be a floating point, we got to convert it to an integer. And we'll do the same with y. And again, in the advanced tutorial, there's actually an easier way to do this. We'll be using vectors, um, which help out tremendously with this. But uh, we're not going to be using vectors in this tutorial. Um, and this should actually work. So we can go ahead and start our game, and it should be moving way slower now. Uh, so one thing I noticed, it the movement's working, but did I mess something up with the... See how they're spawning right off screen? Uh, Rec.y equals... Uh, Self.position.y I know why this is doing this. Give me one second. I'll figure out what's going on because I tested this earlier and it worked fine. So give me one moment. I'll find out what is uh, what's causing this to happen. Okay, sorry about that. So I, um, it was pretty obvious what it was. Um, so because we're no longer using uh, rec.x and rec.y to actually track the actual position, if you want to call it that, the true position of the uh, of the object. We need to remember we set rec.y to be zero minus the height. That way it, appear, it appears off screen and then starts scrolling down. But because we're now using position y for the true uh, uh, position of the object, I need to. I had it set to zero, but I actually need to do zero minus self dot rec dot height. So the same thing we did with rec dot y right here, and I had to do the same with position x. Um, so I had it set to zero, so it would always appear on the left side of the screen. So I just, whatever rec.x was, I assigned it the exact same thing. So now when we play it, they'll actually appear in random spots. They appear off screen and scroll down. And they're all different sizes. Let's make sure it's, yeah, okay, so we got different types. All right, yeah, so that's working. Um, another thing I, I wanna kinda show you how to do in this video, um, if we get a main, and I don't know if this will mess the stream up, but if you want your game to be in full screen, uh, wherever you make the display, right here, we have display equals pygame.display.setmode, and that takes a few arguments. It takes the display size, but one of the other things you can pass in is actually uh, pygame.fullscreen. And then uh, it wants to take all, uh, this is actually a, uh, 
a binary argument we're passing in. Um, and there's a bunch of other, they're called flags, but you can pass a bunch of different flags and chain them together to get it to do different things. So the full screen flag will just turn it, it'll make the game run in full screen mode. And usually when you do that, you want to put the pipe symbol, which does a bitwise or, uh, and you can do, don't worry if you don't know what that is, just know, just type the pipe symbol and you can add flags to it. So there's pygame dot, uh, HW Excel, which is hardware acceleration. If you've ever noticed your game, uh, I've noticed on some machines the game, if you're in windowed mode, it runs kind of choppy. But if you put it in full screen and turn hardware acceleration on, it'll actually use your graphics card to store all of the uh, uh, objects in memory, like all the uh, images, and the game runs really smooth. Uh, for whatever reason, you can't uh, use hardware acceleration in windowed mode. Uh, it only supports it in full screen. I don't know if this will mess the stream up, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and try it. But this should make the game run in um, full screen. Oh, we actually need to do one other thing. Because I'm in, I'll am i be in full screen and I can't exit out without uh, pressing Control-Alt-Delete, I'm going to go to our event handler. And where it says uh, check quit event, right now I just have it to where if it checks the X button, if it's being clicked. But I want to do this. I want to do or... And I also want to check to see if we press the escape key. So I can just type or, and then in parentheses, I'll put pygame, or sorry, uh, event.type equals pygame.key down, and event.key equals pygame.k escape. Uh, so that should let us hit the escape key to close the game out. So let's see if this works. Uh, so I don't. Um, so it. On the stream, it doesn't look like it's full screen, um, and I, I kind of know why that is. It's a resolution issue because I'm using such a weird resolution. Um, it, it's just it's messing with OBS. It is full screen on my computer. Uh, it's just not full screen on the uh, on the video, but it will be if you do it on yours. Um, if I would have picked a resolution that's actually supported by my monitor, it probably wouldn't mess up. But I think I picked some odd resolution like. Uh, 500 by 700 or something but if you did something that was actually a resolution your monitor knew about it should show up fine um but yeah that's uh that's pretty much it for this video and the next one uh, let's see what we're gonna do i actually wrote some some notes here on what i plan to do um, yeah, so in the next one, we're going to implement the live system. I'm going to have icons for the number of lives you have, and we'll get started on that where you can actually like lose your lives and get a game over screen. So you guys have a good one.